In fact, we've got another blue beetle hazard in the studio today. Lev and John are sitting on it. And they are. It's 2,000 bells. They're the only battery driven bionic elephant in the world. So let's give it a spin. Oh, it's great being a driver. What's it like to be the passenger, Leslie? Well, it's a funny feeling, John. Uh, it's a little cross between a camel ride and a vintage car. But actually, once Bertha gets up speed, she can go about six miles an hour, and she's very economic to run because she's battery powered. Oh, but the only trouble is the turning circle. It's about 115 feet. Uh, so we can't really turn to go through here. I think we ought to stop and see how she is in reverse, shall we? Right. Right. Of oh, she does, but it's Get out of the... Get up the elephant, Chip. Get out of those legs. Don't bite him. Chippy, watch it. He'll kick you. You can't have a really. In fact, Bertha is an amazing machine. Yeah. She's discovered on a scrap heap by Bertha Van Ryan McPherson. Mr. McPherson reckons she was probably built about 30 years ago for children to ride around a zoo on. But he's put in a lot of work on her to make sure that the legs work again, and she really does walk very smoothly and very quietly. Yeah, sure. She's going to run and join you. Yeah, all right. Yeah, right. Yeah. We're about to have a stampede, I think. Thank you. While you're climbing over there, have a look at the head. It's quite uh, amazing, is this? Because it's fitted it at the top, and the driver, when he's going along, can move it with his feet. So you see the ears wagged in, like a couple of sails there going along in a gale. Right then, are you all ready for the stampede? We are. Yeah. It's fun, isn't it? It's really nice with the sort of felt covering and the tusks and trunks. It's almost realistic, and uh, certainly the strangest elephant I've ever been near. And me. Yeah. Right then, we oh. shall stampede and see you all again. Next Thursday. By the way, hang on to your, uh... Oh, we're having trouble with me, Oliver. Hang on to your Christmas card. Shut up, shut. Hang on to your Christmas card. Shut up, shut. Hang on to your Christmas card. Shut up, shut. Hang on to your Christmas card. Shut up, shut. We'll show you what to do with us. Oh, I shall be changing some of the time right on right. And we're going to leave you with a wonderful sight. Yes, yeah, just have a look at the bionic rear end. Wonderful. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. And don't bite it, Chef. Come on, I'm going to get it. Come on, I'm going to get it. Thanks to you, we've been able to solve the mystery of bionic purpose the mechanical elephant. And here she is, made as a return visit. Just in case you missed seeing her when she was here three months ago, we'll tell you what happened. Well, we said that we thought that Bertha was the only mechanical elephant in the world. No sooner have we said it than uh, we stopped. I'll go on anyway. Oh, yeah, right, no, right, no sooner have we said that about them than we received a great flood of letters reporting the cancer elephant spottings all over England and even as far away as Australia over a, over a period of about 30 years. Well, but the only problem was that none of these other elephants seemed to be quite the same as Bertha. Uh, they were either not the same size or shape or they had the wrong sort of engine because Bertha is electrically driven and all these other elephants seem to be powered by petrol. Yeah, it's all very baffling, but then came our biggest clue of all. Two letters from two gentlemen who said they'd actually made mechanical elephants. Yes, Mr. Eric Clayton of Braintree said that he'd worked as a mechanical elephant welder. To prove his point, he sent us a brochure and uh, he also sent us a cutting, which I've got here. This is a cutting from a 1950 copy of the Sphere magazine, and he says... I am the person on the far left, I reckon that must be him, holding the howdah to stop it running down the hill. Well, having sat on Bertha going downhill, I know exactly what he means. The second letter came from Mr. Morris Radburn of Saxted, and he wrote, Dear Sir, referring to your programme concerning the walking elephant, I enclosed two brochures of the only elephants which were made. The firm that made these were here at Saxted. I worked for them for many years. Anyone who lays claim to the idea of the elephants are fake. I myself know the full story of this venture, as I myself made the very first walking elephant in model form, and I am very proud of doing so. And I've got here one of the uh, brochures that Mr. Radburn sent to us. On the front cover, you can see there's a splendid picture of an elephant with the words introducing an elephant underneath. Inside, on the first page, there's a picture of the chassis which is very interesting because it's exactly like the picture of this chassis sent to us earlier by a construction firm in Essex. So someone else had been on the right track but hadn't known where the rest of the elephant was built. Well, over the next pages in this uh, brochure, there are photos of the elephant with all its various specifications. But it's at the end of the brochure, on the last page of all, that you get the biggest clue of all because down here it says, Manufactured by Frank Stewart, Bluegate Studios and the Worthings, 
factors ethics. So at last we got the solution to the great mystery of where Bertha was made. In fact, we've invited Mr. Radburn here to the studio today to tell us all about it. He's with Pete now. Mr. Radburn, hello and welcome to the Pete. First of all, what kind of firm was Frank Stewart? Was it a physical mask making firm, making costumes and props? So they all sorts of weird, yes. wonderful things for, yes. for big shows yes. and so on. Yes. But how did the mechanical elephants come to be made? Well, during the summer they started making sure and they were straight big ones that kiddies just to ride on, but they didn't walk. And they just then no. that's it left. That's right. Yes. Yes. So they were powered, they had a yes, petrol motor. How, how did they come to walk eventually? Well, I just had the idea that I could make it walk and they laughed at me and I went to the workshop and made this one. So this was the, the original model of how it might work. Oh, that's right, and basically. They were the opposite. That's right. right. You can see, in fact, they're tied across diagonally, aren't they? Right. So yes. they, they operate. Yes. Like that. Well, I think that's a splendid prototype, mm -hmm. but I much prefer your finely clad elephant that I've got here. There's yes. the mini bird. Actually, you don't call it bird, do you? you call it bimbo. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll take a look at the motor inside there. Mm -hmm. Little electric motor. That's right. And these are the cross ties, yes. which join together the legs. Yes. If I dress it up again, do you think it can walk across the studio? Yes. Well, the big bird. Well, that's the right. right. Well, let's see if bimbo can manage that. Just moves across this way. That's it. It really is extremely lifelike. Now, ah, let's see. The switch is just behind the right, muffles yes. on the shoulder. Ah. I keep my hand just behind it to keep it moving forward because the floor's a little bit slippery. Mm. But it is a very realistic movement there, isn't it? Well, How many of the giant elephants were actually made? 20 to 25. And what about the efficiency of the engines? Which was more, the petrol or the electric? The petrol one because you could um, operate it. You know, gear it up or slow it down. No, I've been with that. Did you know the Caden? Well, yes, yes, very well. You work with him. He was a real one. Yeah. Uh, was it, is Mr. Stewart still alive? Yes, still alive. But I tried to contact him. I think it was about eighty. Well, uh, remarkable imagination. It's obviously very clever. What, yes. Did you make any other kinds of uh, big animals? Like yes, we made a chemical alligator and a petrol engine. Yes, we made 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 a petrol engine. Yes